But for a female songbird, cheating is a risky strategy. If she's caught, her partner will leave. Alone after the chicks are born, she won't be able to meet their needs. Yet a surprising number of songbirds take that risk. DNA testing has revealed that as many as 40% of all chicks are not sired by the male that helps feed them. Cheating, at least for certain female songbirds, gives their chicks better genes and therefore a better chance of surviving until they can reproduce. For the wattle jacanas of Panama, survival of chicks is so uncertain it's led to an amazing gender role reversal. Jacanas lose a lot of chicks to crocodiles. They might have died out long ago if they hadn't found a way to produce more offspring. Their solution? The female lays the eggs, but it's the male who keeps them warm and raises the chicks. If a female is the one who is freed of parental care, she can produce more eggs more rapidly, and both she and the male benefit from that. As Jacana females cut back on nurturing, their reproductive strategy began to change. Now it's the females who care more about quantity than quality. Now it's the females who fight over mates. Over time, they've taken on traditionally male characteristics. It's the females that are larger. Females are highly aggressive. Females compete for access to males. And a highly, quote, successful female is one who is able to accumulate and defend, if you will, a harem of four or even five mates. When a female conquers another's territory, she often breaks the eggs and kills the chicks of the vanquished mother. This makes sense, despite its grisliness. The male instantly becomes available to take her eggs. And in fact, that's what happens. Within hours, the female is sexually soliciting to the male. He starts mounting, and within a few days to a week, he has a clutch of eggs that are her eggs. So here is an evolutionary revelation about gender. Male and female roles are not set in stone. They're largely determined by which sex competes for mates and which invests in the young. Solving the problem of how to pass on your genes can even trigger the emergence of a new species. On the tree of life, different branches are often occupied by species that look poles apart. But sometimes, what separates species is more social than physical, as it is with our closest relatives, chimpanzees and bonobos. Chimpanzees and bonobos live in similar jungles in equatorial Africa. They look alike, live in the same size communities, and eat similar foods. Yet, violence is a fact of life for chimpanzees. Battles between neighboring communities are common. So is the physical abuse of females by males. Bonobos, on the other hand, are essentially peaceful. In all instances, bonobos are predisposed to make love, not war. So why are humankind's closest relatives so different? For 20 years, Richard Wrangham has searched for an answer to that among the chimpanzees of Uganda's Kabali forest. Chimpanzee society is horridly patriarchal, uh, horridly uh, brutal in many ways from the female point of view. I mean, the young males, the late adolescents, it's almost a rite of passage for them. In order to be a, 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 an adult male chimpanzee, you have to be able to dominate all of the females. So that's rough from the female's point of view. They regularly get beaten up in, in horrid ways. Wrangham frequently finds himself in the middle of what, for want of another term, must be called a domestic dispute. The most 
chasing Barbara. He won't pass the set. Barbara's a young female and she's quite upset about being approached by the dominant male for sex. She's only used really to mating the young boys. There's our alpha male, uh, Imose, he's not used to being denied and now he's after Tongo. And uh, uh, his erection, his penile erection, his hair erection, he really wants to get up Tongo. At the moment she's escaped successfully. Female chimps aren't the only ones at risk. Infanticide is thought by primatologists to be a major factor in the evolution of chimpanzee sexuality. As a response to this danger, females try to copulate with all the males in the troop. The grisly logic of infanticide is disrupted if every male thinks every infant might be his. Under this regime in which the females are trying to get matings from lots of different males, then it's favored males to have these tremendous testes and large seminiferous tubules for storing the sperm. So uh, they can put in a tremendous uh, number of sperm, about five times as many as humans. It's very high quality sperm. If you look at human sperm, you know, the classic quote is from the vet who picks up a slide of human sperm and says, if this was a bull, I would shoot it. Um, but chimps, by comparison to humans, have very high quality sperm. And they can have uh, uh, five or more copulations per day. The whole thing only takes seven seconds, though. I mean, this is not fun sex by human standards. Bonobos, on the other hand, seem to find sex thoroughly enjoyable. For the past decade, Amy Parrish has been observing bonobo behavior at the San Diego Wild Animal Park. She's seen them go at it in every way imaginable. You get standard heterosexual interactions, which are often face-to-face, -face, the way they are in humans. You also see what we call ventral upright matings, where a male and a female will hang together out of a tree, suspended, and have sex. Males have sex with other males in what we call rump rump rubbing, where they stand and rub their scrotums together. We also see something among males called penis fencing, where males will suspend off of branches by their arms and rub their erect penises back and forth. And then a very remarkable behavior in which two females rub their genital swellings together in rapid sideways motions. So what's allowed bonobo females to establish such peaceful relations with males? Parrish believes the answer is female solidarity. By cooperating with each other and solidifying their bonds and reducing any tension that does exist, they're able to form alliances with each other and cooperatively dominate males. And this changes the whole balance of power and the whole social dynamic in the group and makes it radically different from chimpanzees. And why have bonobo females evolved a strategy and chimpanzee females haven't? It looks as though a relatively simple change in the feeding ecology is responsible for this dramatic difference in sexual behavior. The bonobos live in an environment where you have herbs much more continuously on the ground. And there are chimpanzees that live in similar forests, but wherever those forests are occupied by chimpanzees, they're also occupied by gorillas. The gorillas eat the food on the ground, leaving the chimpanzees heavily dependent on fruit trees. To get their share, the female chimps forage alone. Mothers, with their babies ranging in age from one to about five, can't move as quickly as the males. I mean, one infant is up here playing in the tree, and, uh, and a couple are, are nibbling slowly, and the mothers have to sit and wait for them. So it's absolutely typical that the males reach the big feeding ground first, and the males have finished all the food by the time the mothers arrive. So the mothers disperse away from each other and away from the males. And that means they can't have much opportunity to form bonds with each other. 